I got my first paycheck, Google AdSense paycheck when I was about 14 for $500. I never imagined that YouTube would become as lucrative of a career as it has for so many people. 2022 was definitely my best and busiest year I've ever had with YouTube. My name is Shelby Church. I'm 28 living in Seattle and you're watching Millennial Money. Well, sort of. CNBC has never actually reached out to me, so I just made my own. If you guys have never seen Millennial Money, it's a documentary series by CNBC where they show how much money people make and how they budget it. So that is why the style of this video is gonna be pretty different than most of my videos. All right, I hope you guys enjoy. Let's get into it. My day usually starts between 6.30 and 7.30 a.m. I never actually set an alarm, I just wake up at that time. I grab some coffee and I'm usually straight to my laptop for the first hour or two of the day. I usually spend about eight to nine hours a day working on videos. It is around that 40 hour a week mark that most people work, but I can tell if I've been slacking one week, I'll be scrambling Saturday morning to try and finish a thumbnail. It does take a long time to make my videos, I like to get a lot of b-roll and interview shots. They're time consuming for sure. Usually around 5 p.m. is where when I wrap everything up. I like to wind down in the evening and just actually enjoy my evening. It really is so different what I spend each month. If I'm traveling and producing a lot of videos that month, it's gonna be a lot more. My rent here, I pay $2,750 every month for my share of this apartment. So I do share it with my sister so she can film in here and she has a room that she can like set up as an office. The utilities are only like $40 a month here. My car is paid off so I have no monthly payment. I even charge it for free because I, I've referred so many people from my Tesla videos. I spend a lot on food. I've been cooking at home more, but it's probably like $800 to $1,000 a month. I like going to dinner with people and getting a drink and I'm gonna live my life. Like food is something I am, I love spending money on, to be honest. I love going out to eat, it's so fun. Travel is something I spend a lot on because my video ideas just take me all over America. I try and use credit card points for my flights but hotels are expensive. And over the summer, I had my videographer travel with me. So I was paying for her flight and her hotel and food and everything there. So, I mean, there were months where I was spending like eight to $10,000 on travel. I'm not spending that much on travel right now. I've really scaled things back. I moved to Seattle exactly a year ago. I am from here, so it is nice to be near some of my siblings that live here and friends that I've known forever. It's also a lot less expensive to live here. I've noticed restaurants, if you're getting drinks, everything is like 20% cheaper than when I lived in LA. Housing is less expensive too. I'm about to move and it's gonna be way cheaper. <laughs> but the biggest thing is not paying state income tax. I would be lying if that wasn't a factor of wanting to move. When I realized that I could save like over $30,000 by not living in California. I mean, that's enough to have an apartment in California that you live in part time. It was kind of a no brainer at that point. $30,000 is a ton of money. That, you know, 10 years ago, that's what I made in a year. So I do have an Airbnb. If you've followed along, you know it hasn't been the most profitable investment. We didn't quite break even because we had more maintenance than expected. It was about $13,000 split between me and my sister. I had to pay $6,000 to have that Airbnb. I used to think an Airbnb would be like a no brainer, so profitable. And the truth is it's harder for, to make them profitable than you would expect, especially now. I do think that eventually I'll be able to break even on that property. I'm getting solar panels. Bookings have been amazing lately. There's so many expenses you don't think about. Landscaping, pool cleaners, it's so much more than the mortgage. I still think it's gonna work out in the long term, but the first year wasn't that profitable. It was not, it wasn't profitable. <laughs> On average, I would say the last three years, I've made somewhere 
between three to $500,000 a year. But 2022 was something else entirely. That was my busiest year. It was really stressful. I made $981,000 in 2022. It just sounds crazy to say that. That was a goal for me was to make a million dollars in a year before taxes and business expenses. So it's really like half that. So I do have to pay taxes on that money, like I said, and business expenses like tax preparation, hiring that videographer that was, you know, a significant amount. I think it was about $30,000. I did also invest in some new equipment. I was so hesitant about doing this, but I'm so glad I did. It was expensive. This laptop is like maxed out, but it's so fast and the monitor does make it. So I'm way faster at editing. So this stuff, it was an investment truly, but it's been super worth it. My taxes for this last year are not finished yet. So I've been saving for a huge payment for that. I've been paying quarterly too, but since I don't live in California anymore, it's, I do keep more of it. And it, not gonna lie, it's pretty awesome. It's easy to look at YouTubers and think that it's not work because it's fun to watch a video, but it is a lot of work actually creating videos, especially the more documentary style ones where you're going and interviewing people. It's, it's work and a lot of times I'm wearing multiple hats. I'm doing the sound, I'm setting up tripods and I'm the interviewer. Like I think part of the reason that I make a good amount is because I'm doing like three or four jobs in one. If I were to hire out all these things, I wouldn't make nearly as much. Like I could hire an editor, a sound person, a videographer for every video, but I find that I can do it myself just fine. I actually kind of prefer that a lot of the time. I work with videographers from time to time, but right now with there being more of a recession, I haven't been, honestly. When I was 18, I was living off of YouTube. I was making like $30,000 a year, but I could see how it's like this snowball effect was growing more and more when I was in community college. A lot of the teachers there just encouraged me to not transfer to a four-year school. So they gave me the confidence to not transfer. They really could see where things were going People were moving more towards YouTube than tr traditional film and TV. But I never finished college. I don't have any student loans. I mean, when I went to community college, it was like $3,000 a semester. It wasn't that expensive. By the time I was 21, I made like around $100,000 a year. And then there, there were years that it was a little less, a little more. It ebbs and flows. That is just like the nature of owning your own business. My big financial goal these days is to buy a primary residence that I live in. I rent here and I don't wanna be a renter forever. I wanna own a place that I live in. Yes, I have my Airbnb, but if I were to go back in time, I don't know if I would do that again, to be honest. I love the idea of buying a house. I want to fix it up, renovate it, make it exactly how I want it. And I wanna pay off the whole thing before the 30 year mortgage. I love the idea of not having a mortgage. There's just something, the psychological aspect of that I think would be very worth it. I know people really are all about leveraging their money in all these ways, but I think that there's something, something to be said for the psychological aspect of paying off that mortgage and just the freedom that would come with that. Like you don't have those golden handcuffs anymore. If I didn't wanna do YouTube, I wouldn't have to really, but I think I still would. I would just like use copyrighted music. I don't think I'm too far off from, you know, buying a house, but with the way interest rates are right now, I am waiting a little longer and trying to save as much as I can for a place. I really want a renovation project and I wanna do some of it myself. Like I really enjoyed that. I've, I've learned a lot with the Palm Springs house and I feel like I could do such a better job and I could do things myself and document it and just share everything I've learned. I'm optimistic with how things are looking. Even though we are, you know, going into more of a recession, like I've still been able to make videos. I've just scaled things back and budgeted a little more accordingly. I hope that you guys have enjoyed learning a bit more about my finances. It honestly, it's a little scary to put it all out there on YouTube, but I do like the transparency. I really appreciate people like Graham Stefan, who I've learned so much from his videos. I know he's watching this 
and reacting to it. Hey, Graham. If a few people can learn from me, like that's amazing. It's only beneficial for us to be more transparent about finances. I think it's really cool that our generation can be like that. I do have some more like personal finance related ones that I wanna do. I don't know, it's just been like more interesting to me lately. So if you wanna see more of those, hit subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram and stuff if you want. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.